He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Israelites, majority of you know the Most High the Father through the wisdom and knowledge of this world. The ministers of Satan from religion is teaching the world about the creator of heaven and earth. The very people who oppress us until this day. The very people who enslave us until this day. A species of people whose roots stems from violence and destruction. The very people, the scripture said, the world was given into the hands of the wicked are the ones teaching history as well as teaching the so-called righteous about their God and religion and the beast culture. Israelites, the world was given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Israelites, what does it mean to you when the scripture said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked? The scriptures is informing us that the very people that rule this world are wicked. Let us not add to the scriptures. The scripture said the world was given into the hands of the wicked. If you're not convinced that the people who are in control of this world with the Satans don't serve nor worship the most high, you don't want to believe the truth that is in front of you. The world was given into the hands of the wicked. Every high level position in this world is occupied by a worker of iniquity. Let us not forget that the book of Jubilee said every nation have a spirit of authority over it to lead those nations astray from the most high. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples and all are his. And over all have he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. When you let the scriptures speak, the truth that is hiding starts to manifest. Majority of us are used to hearing the scriptures with religious doctrines attached to it. It's very rare to hear the scriptures word for word without the doctrines from religion. Israelites, the scriptures... Let us know that the world was given to the wicked and spirits of authority that are over all the nations, excluding the Israelite nation, are leading those nations astray from the Most High. In addition to all of this, the scriptures in the book of Ephesians said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I don't know how many different ways can the scriptures tell us the leaders of this world do not serve the Most High, nor do they do the will of the Most High. Israelites, there is no way as captives and scattered to the four corners of this world should we believe anything that comes from the mouths of those that rule over us. Satan's ministers have been lying to us for multiple generations. Last week, you learned that they take refuge in their lies and hide behind their falsehoods. They made a covenant with death and they made an agreement with hell. The Holy Seed should have nothing in common with the rulers of the darkness of this world. The Holy Seed shouldn't mingle themselves with the heathens that have a perpetual hatred for you. What do light have in common with darkness? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? A lot of Israelites in the other awakening recycled the doctrines of the heathens, uphold the heathens' traditions. 
The scriptures did say that some Israelites forsake the laws of the Most High for the traditions of men. The Israelites serve their God the exact same way the heathens serve their idols. The only difference is that they restore some of the names of the prophets and nations in the scriptures, as well as change the skin color of the heathens created idol God to their own and continue in the abominations of the heathens. The Israelites in the other awakening don't walk in the spirit. They are led by the flesh. That is why their beliefs are identical with the heathens the scriptures warn them not to follow. If we're relying on the workers of iniquity to teach us all things about the most high, the high level workers of iniquity don't know the most high, nor do they have his spirit. The scriptures inform us that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. How can we take the high level workers of iniquity words as truth and follow their ways in religion and the beast culture? To a great majority of Israelites, the doctrines from the beast religion supersedes the truth from the Holy Spirit. If the words from your enemies hold more value to you, what is the point of the Holy Spirit? The Most High didn't say that we had to attend Bible school, Sunday service, and become a pastor to get to know him and the truth. The Most High said the Holy Spirit will reveal truth and tell us the things to come. In addition, when the word of God was flesh, he said the comforter he prayed to the father to send in his name would teach us everything. The Holy Spirit will bring all things to our remembrance. Everything the word of God taught and said, the comforter would reveal it. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. How come the Holy Seed depend on religion as well as other people to know the truth of the Most High's words? How come majority of the world is not learning from the Holy Spirit? Most people are listening and following what was taught to them in religion. Majority of people are following after workers of iniquity who don't have the Spirit of the Most High. The Holy Spirit don't abide with the workers of iniquity in religion as well as the heathen's educational system. The workers of iniquity rely on familiar spirits to lie to you. The new covenant the Most High said he would make with Judah in the house of Israel. The covenant stipulate that the Most High would write his laws in our hearts and in our minds. The Most High went on to say we all would know him. Behold. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. But they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The new covenant that is prophesied by Jeremiah the workers of iniquity and religion proclaim that the new covenant is with the church and spiritual Israel. How come the people in the church don't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How come for multiple generations they have been given the glory of the Father to another, worshiping the creature more than the creator? When the word of God became flesh, he was hated and rejected by the very people he came to save. Today, more than half of this world's population is supposedly worshiping the Messiah that was rejected. What changed? When he came in the flesh, you rejected him. Now that he's gone, you have accepted him? The doctrines the workers of iniquity indoctrinated you with made many of you accept the false version of the Messiah and the Most High. That is why majority of the world is worshiping the imitation. 
the beast culture worship and serve the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the God that operates in the children of disobedience. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Israelites, the time has come for you to know that the heathen's gods are not your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not being worshipped in the beast system. The Satans made an imitation of the word of God and the Most High to deceive you to worship their idol God. The beast culture accept and welcome the God of this world. That is why the scripture said in the book of John that if you belong to the world, the world will love you because the world accepts its own. The holy seed belongs to the father that he set apart from all nations. The holy seed represents the most high. It's through the holy seed the rest of the world will know the father. Right now, the world don't have no respect for the holy seed. Therefore, the world will hate everyone who served the true God of Israel. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hateth you. Jesus, the kingdom of darkness imitation is love and accepted by the world. Jesus is the God of this world. When the word of God became flesh, he was rejected and not accepted. The God everyone is accepting as their Lord and Savior in the beast religion and culture is not the most high or the Messiah sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Anything that glorifies the Most High, including his people, are hated and not accepted in the beast system. Remember, the beast system is Satan's kingdom in the physical realm. Satan was given temporary dominion. That is why he is the God of this world. The time has come for you to come to the realization of this truth and separate from the doctrines of devils taught to you in the beast religion by the spiritual wickedness in high places. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Holy Spirit operates in the righteous. Anyone who proclaims to be righteous have a relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit abide with them. The Holy Spirit will reveal everything you need to know. Remember, it was prophesied that the Most High will pour out His Spirit on His people. The Most High started to pour out his spirit many generations before our generation. Peter said in the book of Acts, on the day many called the Pentecost, that the prophecy said by the prophet Joel was being fulfilled when the people received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. And hearken to my words. But these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The Messiah said the Holy Spirit he prayed to the Father to send in his name, the Comforter, is the one the Most High appointed to teach us all things and bring to our remembrance everything the Word of God taught the people when he was flesh. We can read this in the scriptures in the book of John. How come in this generation the people are dependent on religion and religious pastors to teach them all things? The Most High assigned the Holy Spirit to reveal all things to you. The Satans created religion to derail you from the Most High to come under their control to deceive you. Remember, Satan's goal is that Adam doesn't have anyone to inherit the kingdom. Satan believed if Adam doesn't have anyone to inherit the kingdom, the Most High will restore him. The Most High made a way to save Adam and the righteous of his seed. No salvation was given to the Satans and their children. That is why Satan created religion to give his followers, who are very wicked, false hope of inheriting eternal life in the kingdom of the Most High. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, 
and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Despite of their unrepented ways and their savagery continue until this day, they go to church every Sunday believing their God will save them. Israelites, have you noticed how the children of disobedience are against the laws of the Most High? They pervert the words of the Most High with their perversions. They are savages and very violent. These very people, white, black, and mixed, go to the altars built to the God of this world to have their sins become someone else's burden. Once their God take their sins, they go and repeat the same behavior. The children of disobedience truly believe they will inherit the kingdom. All they have to do is believe in the God that became flesh. The people who serve the God of this world will oppress you and turn around and say everyone is equal. In the meantime, they are in the front line denying you what they say everyone should have. Israelites, don't be partakers with them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Israelites, you can't say you serve the Father and you don't know the voice of the Most High through the Holy Spirit. In addition, when the Holy Spirit reveals truth, it shouldn't be a foreign language to you. Whatever the Holy Spirit say to you, it hears from the Most High. The Holy Spirit never speak on its own accord. Whatever the Holy Spirit revealed to you should override everything you have been taught in the beast system. All of our fathers and mothers, the Most High deemed righteous, followed the prompting from the Holy Spirit. Even when the Word of God was flesh, He said He doesn't speak from His own accord, but from the Most High, the Father who sent Him. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine but the fathers which sent me. A great majority of Israelites know the Most High through religion. A large group of people don't know the Most High through truth. That is why so many Israelites in the awakening continue to reject the Most High and the Word of God. Because the scriptures in the Bible said that there will be an increase of false teachers and doctrines in the last days, the spirit of fear is robbing some Israelites from the truth being told by the Most High through his spirit that abide with the righteous in the last days. Some Israelites respond just like our ancestors did with the Messiah when he was flesh. Our ancestors said, what new doctrine is this? Just as so many in the awakening said when they found out that the word of God is Michael. They started to warn others of a new doctrine that they believe was demonic because they lack knowledge. Although the teaching of Michael being the Messiah is not a new doctrine, they are quick to let the spirit of unbelief rob them of truth that can make them free. Some Israelites have a long way to go. And they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. It's unfortunate that until this day, some Israelites are still denying the word of God. Israelites, it was designed for our ancestors to reject the word of God when he became flesh to accomplish his mission on the earth. Today, there's no reason for you to allow the spirit of unbelief to destroy the good seed the Most High is planting in his people. You have no reason to reject the truth of the Most High's words. When the word of God became flesh, he said to his disciples that he have to suffer and die. Once his mission is complete, he would return to the Father that sent him. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be under thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. 
As you heard in the scriptures, Peter at the time lacked knowledge of the Messiah's purpose. Peter wanted to prevent anything from happening to the Messiah. Yahshua rebuked the Satan that was influencing Peter to interfere with the will of the Most High. Israelites, it was designed by the Most High for the Messiah to suffer and die. The Most High prophesied the coming of the Messiah to Adam and Eve from the very beginning. The Word of God said to Adam the same thing Yahshua said to his disciples when he became flesh. When Adam learned that the word of God had to suffer and die in order for him to obtain salvation, it grieved Adam's spirit. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of thy seed and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest, then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave, when I am in the flesh of thy seed. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee. Then Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of God's words to them, that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. As you can see, Israelites, the prophecy of the word of God becoming flesh and suffering was known by Adam from the very beginning. With religion transforming the Messiah into the father in the flesh is a distraction by the Satans to deceive you. The word of God had a mission and he came to fulfill the mission. The scriptures in the Bible don't give us a detailed account of what could cause a people to reject the Messiah sent by the Most High to help them. Although the Israelite bloodline is a holy seed that is supposed to be a light to the world, their wicked ways was used by the Father to cause them to reject the Messiah in those days. If our ancestors didn't reject the Messiah, then the Messiah wouldn't be able to accomplish his mission. Our ancestors rejected Yahshua for the same reason so many is rejecting him now. Lack of knowledge and the spirit of unbelief. The scriptures did say the Israelites are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Religion have taught us that when the Messiah became flesh, he came to save and deliver the people. Israelites, the word of God became flesh to restore Adam, as well as give us the ability to find forgiveness of sins when we repent. If you watch the teachings about Melchizedek, you will know the reason the Messiah came in the flesh. The main reason was to restore Adam and to destroy the works of the Satans. He that committeth sin is of the devil, but the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How can the Messiah being sinless die and go to hell if he didn't commit any sins? The only way for the Messiah to enter the gates of hell was to take the sins of the people to die and enter hell to take the keys from the Satans that had control over death. Remember, the wages of sin is death. Israelites, it's when the Messiah returned as the word of God prophesied in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel, that is when we will be delivered and saved. If you take the time to read the scriptures without the commentary from religion, the Holy Spirit will begin to open the sealed scriptures to reveal truth to you. The main reason our ancestors rejected Yahshua, the generation of Israelites alive at that time couldn't verify the lineage of Mary or any Israelite in that generation because King Nebuchadnezzar burned down the house of the Most High with fire and destroyed Jerusalem. After this, Nebuzaradan, captain of the king's army, destroyed the walls of Jerusalem, burnt the house of God with fire, and did all manners of evil to Jerusalem. The priest at that time, Simeon, asked the captain to the army of Nebuchadnezzar if he could have the records that was in the temple. The Most High gave Simeon favor and he gathered the ashes to the books that were burned. Yet Simeon, the priest, found favor and grace with the captain of the king's army and requested him to give him the house, library, or ark of records, and he gave him a command accordingly. 
Then Simeon the priest came in and gathered together the ashes of the books and laid them in a pot in a vault. All of this took place during the time of the prophet Jeremiah. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that the scribes and the interpreters destroyed the writings and records of our ancestors. The workers of iniquity altered the writings, causing the Syrians and the Greeks to reject many writings. The workers of iniquity manipulated the records that the Israelites in that generation did not know who their kindred and families were. Only a few Israelites knew their lineage. Yet the writers and the interpreters destroyed the writings, and the Hebrews changed the writings, and the Syrians and the Greeks rejected many sections of those writings so that the children of the people could not ascertain their kindred. Neither could men or women hear who were their fathers or their mothers, except very few of them. And this was because of the laying waste of Jerusalem, so that until this day, nothing certain is found among the writings, except the chief writings alone, writings that had been translated before the ruin of Jerusalem. This remind me of the times we're living now. Some of us don't know our tribes or anything about our Israelite heritage. The scriptures in the book of Adam and Eve revealed that the writings were altered to the point that the Israelites didn't know how to get married, who their families were. The generation of Israelites at that time were like some of us. They had no knowledge about their culture. Then again, since some of the writings were altered, people could not ascertain how they were married and could not know who were their wives or daughters. They did not know their names or their kindred, nor the order of generations. Neither did they know that of the priesthood. Israelites, if the workers of iniquity altered the writings back then, what do you believe they have done to the authorized Bible they made available to the world? That is why we are the generation that rely on the Holy Spirit to tell us everything we need to know. The Bible is manipulated and altered to deceive you into accepting the God of this world as your Lord and Savior. When Ezra, the scribe, went to Jerusalem, he went into the vault where the priest Simeon kept the ashes to the burning books. Ezra prayed to the Father and the Spirit of the Most High came upon Ezra and he began to write the laws and restore the records. Yet when the children of Israel returned from Babylon, they had not the law. Neither was there a book in their hands, and as much as the voice of the prophets had departed from among them. So when they came to Jerusalem and were settled in it, Ezra the scribe came to the vault in which were the ashes of the books, which Simeon the priest had gathered together. And Ezra found the censer that was full of fire, hanging with smoke of incense rising from it on hot. Then Ezra prayed to God, wept abundantly, and spread his hand towards the ashes of the books of the law and of the prophets, and all of them three times. Then came the Spirit of God upon him, and the same Spirit spake through him that had spoken through the prophets. And he wrote the law and the prophets, and made them new a second time. And the fire which he found in the censer is the divine fire that was all the time in the house of God. Israelites, do you see the power of the Holy Spirit? The Israelites in that generation forgot everything, just like us in this generation. The scriptures say they haven't heard from the Most High when they were in the Babylonian captivity. They had no laws. The voice of the prophets departed from them. But when Ezra prayed, the Father sent the Holy Spirit to restore everything the heathens have destroyed. Like I've said to you in multiple videos, the heathens can alter the writings and insert their fairy tales into the scriptures. They can steal our identity and do whatever they want to the scriptures. If the Holy Spirit abide with you, everything hidden and altered, the Spirit of the Most High will expose it. Just as the Most High have been revealing deep truth to you by His Spirit from this channel. Some Israelites are dismissing the truth by calling the truth new doctrine. Don't let Satan deceive you. The heathens know it's the truth. That is why they increase the censorship. Israelites, every sin will be forgiven, but the sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Don't let the spirit of unbelief cause you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. 
But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because they said, he hath an unclean spirit. Israelites, don't let the workers of iniquity and the disciples of Satan cause you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That sin will not be forgiven. I've warned you once before about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. This is the second warning. Just because the person the Most High is using may not be to your standard, it doesn't mean the Most High cannot use him or her to complete his will. Just because the Most High haven't opened up your understanding about the truth he is revealing, it doesn't mean what you're hearing is false. That is why I always say go to the Father. There's nothing the Holy Spirit cannot reveal to you. The fire that was in the censer, the priest Simeon placed in front of the ashes to the books in the vault is the same divine fire that was in the house of the Most High. It's the same fire Adam asked the Most High to keep with us. Today you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the fire which he found in the censer is the divine fire that was all the time in the house of God. Then Adam asked God that the divine fire might remain in the lamp before his sons until the time when bodies shall rise again and God left the divine fire by them to shed light on them. The Israelites returning from the Babylonian captivity didn't know anything about their culture. Ezra had to pray and seek the face of the father and the most high sent his spirit to restore his laws. The scribes kept records of the men however they could not record the names of the women. The scriptures said they didn't know the women, but a few only. The genealogy of Joseph, the husband to Mary, was known, but when it came to the lineage of Mary, they couldn't find records of her family. Because of this, the unbelieving Israelites rejected Mary and Joshua ben Joseph. And Jacob married Gadat, the daughter of Eliezer, who gave birth to Joseph, the betrothed of Mary. And Jehoiakim, the brother of Jacob, married Hannah, the daughter of Makkah, and she brought forth the pure virgin Mary, and of her was born Christ. The former scribes, however, could not find a good lineage for the virgin and her father or kindred. Wherefore did the Jews crucify Christ and taunt him and mock him and say to him, Show us the father of Mary, the virgin, and her people, and what is her genealogy? The scriptures reveal the Israelites mocked Mary and the Messiah. The Israelites rejected the Messiah because they couldn't verify Mary's lineage. Israelites, I hope you're starting to see the danger of unbelief. Just because it's not written in the altered scriptures in the authorized Bible, it doesn't mean it's false. Our ancestors rejected the Messiah and his mother because they couldn't verify her lineage. Some Israelites would say their reason for rejecting the Messiah and his mother was valid. Their rejection turned out to be invalid because Mary was indeed a descendant of Judah. Israelites, the Holy Spirit will reveal a lot of truth in the last days that are not written in the authorized Bible. Remember, the scriptures are altered. Our ancestors in that generation had no guidance. The laws was destroyed from among our people three times. Therefore did they blaspheme her in Christ. Yet henceforth shall the mouth of those unbelieving Jews be closed, and they shall know that Mary is of the seed of David, the king, and of that the line of the patriarch Abraham. Moreover, the unbelieving Jews had no register to guide them aright. Neither did they know how the lines of kindred ran at first, and as much as the law and the prophets were three times burnt out from them. The first time in the days of Enatach, who burned down the whole house of God. The second time they burnt those books in the days of Kablar, the great king of Mosul. And the third time they burnt the books was at the transportation by King Nebuchadnezzar when Abermadan came and burnt the house of God and destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. When Simeon the priest asked of him the store of books and he gave them to him. Israelites, as you have heard, our ancestors rejected the Messiah following traditions. They were doing what they believed was righteous and true. In the process of them following their records, they rejected the very king the Most High sent. Israelites, don't repeat the same mistakes of our ancestors. 
I don't know how many ways to tell you that religion have lied to you. The doctrines about the Messiah from Rome are false. Because the scribes didn't have the proper records of the genealogy of the daughters of Zion, many Israelites rejected the Messiah. Some even went as far as to say, let his blood be on them and their children. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Our ancestors were following what they believed was true. In the process, they rejected the word of God, the very Messiah they were waiting for. Today in the awakening, the Most High has revealed the identity of the word of God. Like our ancestors, some Israelites are rejecting the word of God because they don't believe he could be an angel, but only the Most High, the Father in the flesh. They are ignoring countless scriptures showing them that the Trinity doctrine is false. Some Israelites rather uphold the doctrines taught to them by the workers of iniquity in religion. Our ancestors did the same. They chose to follow the records of genealogy that was incomplete. Because some Israelites couldn't identify Mary's lineage, they rejected their king in the process. Today in the awakening, so many believe they are serving the Most High through the Messiah and they are far from him. The Messiah the world have accepted is not the word of God, but the prince of this world who wants to be like the Most High. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. There were alternative ways and signs our ancestors could have looked for to verify the birth of the Messiah. However, because they couldn't find Mary's lineage in their records, they made a terrible decision and put curses on their life and their children as well. Israelites don't repeat the mistakes of our ancestors, believe the truth of the Most High's words by His Spirit. A lot was written about the Word of God. Despite of all that was written about the Messiah to die to save Adam, Eve, and the righteous from the Satans in hell, the Most High made many promises to Adam and Eve. When the word of God became flesh, he fulfilled those promises, also fulfilled everything that was written about him in the scriptures. And he went down into hell and saved Adam and Eve and all their righteous seed according to his first and firm promise. And thus he fulfilled all that the prophet had prophesied concerning him. Religion transformed the word of God into an idol that is now worshipped in the beast system. If you take the time to read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit, the word of God's purpose and mission will be found. Our ancestors who rejected the Messiah were fulfilling the scriptures without knowledge. We see history repeating itself in this generation. Israelites, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. The truth from the Holy Spirit comes with an absolute assurance. Remember, we are the generation that must worship and serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth. The Most High is making it known who will return at the appointed time. When he return, he will return with his angels to execute the wrath of the Most High and judge. He then went up into heaven whence he will come again with his holy angels to judge the quick and dead. The fairy tales taught to us by the workers of iniquity and religion, the scriptures don't confirm their doctrines. The time has come for you to understand that the high-level workers of iniquity use the story of the Messiah to get the world to worship the God of this world. The main reason many Israelites are rejecting the word of God, religion have indoctrinated them to believe he is the most high, the father in the flesh. The indigenous black people will worship anything they believe is God. The Most High is correcting his people in the awakening and revealing truth for you to turn from your wicked ways and return to him. Israelites, time is of the essence. Don't let Satan deceive you into believing you have a lot of time. The word of God said, I will come quickly and my rewards are with me. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Israelites, don't let faith be the only thing written about you in the books. Faith without works is dead. The word of God said he will give to all men according to their works. I hope your works are pleasing in the sight of the Most High. Israelites, when the word of God became flesh, he was Joshua ben Joseph. Now that he completed his mission in the flesh, he is the word of God. 
The word of God is Michael, the angel of the Lord that had been with Adam and all of our fathers from the beginning. You are in the same position with our ancestors alive when the word of God became flesh. They had to decide to believe or to reject the Messiah. It's either you're going to serve the most high in the spirit and in truth, or you will reject the truth and continue to follow the heathens. The choice is yours. Make sure you're making a decision that will cause you to inherit the kingdom of the most high. Michael is the one that is set over the coming kingdom. Israelites, who do you say that he is? Only the father can reveal that truth to you. The remnant, the true worshipers are seeking the face of the father daily. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, the salvations of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he.